it is now about 9 30 10 and I have already finished the silent patient I actually finished this in one sitting last night it was around a nine hour audiobook but I listened to it on 1.75 speed the audiobook was amazing the narrators there were two of them brought this book to life it was a very cerebral read. This book was less of a thriller and more of a psychological evaluation <laughs> of humanity and the the darkness of humanity. I loved this. It made my psychology heart happy. <laughs> I used to go, I wanted to be a psychologist at one point in my life. And I loved the vo the point of view from the psychotherapist and learning about his background and his trauma and the way that his therapist helped him work through his trauma. And it was all very, very realistic as a person coming from a a mental illness, mental health standpoint. So I really loved that part of the story. The ending had a twist that I did not see coming. I should have seen it coming in retrospect, but I did not see it coming at all. And I was blown away. I was like, oh, what? What? I was kind of making the connection vaguely in my brain. I was like, oh, what? But then it actually happened and I still was completely shocked. It was so good. It's very character driven, but there's still a lot of action. There's a lot going on. There's several characters. It's completely set almost exclusively in the psychiatric hospital where the silent patient is staying. And the main character, uh, what's his name? Theo. Theo is the main character, and he has decided that he wants to go and take a job at this specific psychiatric facility where the silent patient, Alicia, lives. And so he's going, doing his best to get her to start talking and explain what happened to her, why she killed her husband, all of those things that happened. And guys, five stars absolutely five stars this was amazing I have heard that his second work isn't very good and it's been it's put me off from reading it because everyone says oh my gosh his first book is so good but then the second book is like meh so I don't think I'm gonna read his second book but I'm hoping that he'll come out with something else that has really good reviews because his writing is amazing I listened to a interview with him at the end of the audiobook that I was reading and he said that he's really inspired by like the golden age mysteries like Agatha Christie. He spent his whole summer reading Agatha Christie's when he was a kid and he wanted to write something similar and he grew up in Cyprus so he's heavily influenced by Greek tragedy and this is definitely influenced by Greek tragedy as well so 1000% recommend this book. It was amazing. It was so good. So that was an amazing start to my spring fling a lot. Spring fling a Wow. Spring fling a ween. <laughs> I'm wearing my shirt again. It's so cute. And I am going to be jumping into the breakdown today and see how this goes. The last one that I read was a four star, so I'm hopeful that this is going to be also very good. But first, coffee and probably breakfast. So it is pouring down rain outside. I'm sure you guys saw some of the clips from that this morning. Pouring down rain. So it is a perfect day. It looks like fall. It feels like Halloween time. And I can just curl up inside and read all day. So I am so happy. Also, I do need to make a stop at the bookstore because my class is starting to read the second Harry Potter book. We do read Harry Potter in fourth grade. So I need to get the second illustrated edition of the Harry Potter books. Um... I think I said this in previous vlogs before, I 100% do not support JK Rowling and her viewpoint on transgender and queer people. Um, it's very offensive coming from a person who is actually in that community. But as a teacher, <clears throat> our curriculum is 
reading Harry Potter and the kids absolutely love it and I loved it as a kid too. So I do not begrudge them the experience of loving Harry Potter with their whole hearts and um, I get the illustrated edition so that they can see the pictures. So that is what I will be doing today, possibly picking up a couple more books, I don't know, and then I will be settling down to read. So I will update you when I have some things to say about my next book. The rain has disappeared as quickly as it came and now it is sunshine and blue skies and that makes me just as happy as the rain, so that's lovely. I'm sitting outside of our local bookstore but it's not quite open yet so I'm going to enjoy my coffee and the bagel that I got and then I will head inside. So apparently my bookstore doesn't open until noon today and it's only like 10.20. So I came home with my coffee and I'm going to start reading my book and I'm going to head out in a few hours to go to the bookstore. But I'm totally okay with that because I'm excited to dive into my book. So yay. book is really really intriguing so far it has an unreliable narrator which I am a huge fan of in thriller books and so far like I said before it's the story of a woman who has been driving through a very scary part of the woods at night and sees a woman who is just sitting in her car and she pulls over and is about to go help her, but then realizes, oh my gosh, like it could be a trap. It's the middle of the night. It's stormy. There's no one else around. And she doesn't want to get out of her car. So she gives the woman a chance to get out of her car to come and help her. She kind of like lingers around the area for a while, but the woman doesn't make any move to get out of the car, doesn't flash her lights, doesn't wave at her to ask for help. So she moves on. And then the next morning she realizes that she's died. And now she's suffering with this immense guilt because she feels like if she had stopped and actually gotten out of the car to help, maybe she would still be alive. And she is uh, talking to, she, we're, we're introduced to the people in her life, like her best friend and her husband, and they're all very wonderful people. But we're introduced to, but slowly but surely we're realizing that this narrator has been, um, losing her memory. Her mother was diagnosed with dementia at 44 and she's like 33, 34 and she's having some serious signs of dementia. She's completely forgetting all the things, including some pretty important things. So we know that she doesn't have very good memory. We know that she isn't honest with the people around her. She's already lying and not telling them what actually happened, and she's mentioned that she's lied in the past, so she's a very unreliable narrator. So I'm really, really intrigued to keep reading. Unreliable narrator, like I said, is like one of my favorite tropes, so love this.
is really stressful. It's called The Breakdown. And it's definitely a double entendre because the woman they believe may have broken down on the road that died in the beginning. But essentially it's really a story about watching this woman, the main character, slowly come unraveled at the seams and have a complete mental breakdown. And it's really difficult to read. <laughs> it's really good. Like, I am already... 131 pages into it and I've only been reading it for about two hours so it's going really quickly and I definitely want to just sit and read the rest of it like I don't want to put it down it's so good but it's also really stressful and frustrating and I'm pretty sure she's crazy like they're setting it up to be that she's crazy so maybe she's not crazy and something is actually happening and that'll be the twist I really don't know um, also, I think I might make this a spoiler vlog of this book, so if I start seeing spoilers, I'll let you know. Actually, I'm going to start seeing spoilers now. But my prediction from the very beginning was that she's actually the person who killed her, that she saw her and pulled over and murdered her on the road, and now she's having a mental breakdown because of it. And that's kind of where I'm thinking this is going, but they're making her seem like so crazy in the book that maybe the twist is that she's actually not crazy and she really is being stalked and there really is a reason for her to be totally crazy. So I, it could go either way. I don't know. But it's about 1230 now. I think I'm going to take a break and go to the store or not go to the store. Go to the, Well, yeah, the bookstore. <laughs> go to the bookstore, pick up the book I need to get. And then maybe get some lunch and then come back and finish off the book. So really good so far. Definitely feeling like a five star. If the twist is unexpected, I think it will definitely be a five star. But if it's going the way I think it's going, then it'll probably be a four star. Still really good, but I enjoy it when I can't predict what's going to happen. So I will keep you updated. <laughs> Today was such a fun day to go into the bookstore. So they were doing this fun promotion where they had book trivia for fantasy books and you fill it out, you put in your information and put it in and if you uh, get them answers right, you're part of a drawing and you earn like a, a gift card I think to the store which is really fun. They were providing um, free tea samples and the one I got was really good. It was like a combination chai with like other kinds of scents or other other elements as well and it was really really yummy and then it was really fun because when you checked out they had either a d6 or a d20 that you could choose from and then you choose one die and then you roll it I chose the d20 obviously because it was fun and if you roll between a certain range of numbers then you get a certain percent off so like zero to five was five percent off or like one to five and then nine to fifteen was ten percent and then anything above that was going to be twenty percent off so I got ten percent off of my purchase which was so cool and it was just really fun it was I love going in there the owner is so much fun to talk to and they have a book club that's going there and I've been meaning to join the book club the last two months but just haven't had the time because <laughs> I've been not prioritizing those books on my TBRs and I haven't read them but next month they're doing The Nature of Witches and I've been really wanting to get to that book so I think I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my TBR next month to uh, be sure to be able to go to the book club that they hold so I'm excited I love this new bookstore they just opened like I don't know three months ago or something maybe even less than that and it is so great and I'm so glad that it has so much business every time I go in there it's really busy so anyway quick book haul I got 
a little bookmark <laughs> with a cat ghost, which is perfect for spring flingoween, I thought. Little ghost, and on the back it has the little kitty ghosties. Sorry if it's a little blurry, but I thought it was so perfect. And then I got The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. This is going to be a thing that I do hopefully next month, maybe over the summer, um, for a special vlog. So that's something to be looking forward to. And then, like I said, I got the illustrated version of The Chamber of Secrets so that I could share it with my class when we start reading it next week. So overall, it was a very fun, lovely break from my really stressful book that I'm reading. But I am going to head back home Wait, no, I'm going to get food, and then I'm going to head back home, and I'm going to bust through the rest of that book, and then get started on No Exit, which is my plan for this evening. This evening, I am going to be having dinner with my cousin, most likely, and uh, spending the night with her, and then we're going to get our nails done tomorrow, but hopefully, I'll be able to get everything I want to get done before that, so <laughs> anyway, I will update you in a little bit, and I hope you guys are having an amazing time, because I really am. <laughs> Don't care. So anyways, uh, I got this one. No one gets out alive. I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna be spooky. She said it was like, Jordaline being she, of course, said that it was like the one that actually got to her and freaked her out. Ugh. This book is still really stressful. And I still don't know. I mean, it's really laying it on hard that she is really mentally unwell. And it's a little bit of a trigger for me because a few years ago I was super mentally unwell and it it's just very similar. I mean, there's a lot of differences. Like I wasn't as like afraid and paranoid because I didn't think someone was like trying to murder me, obviously. But just the sense of like her depression and not wanting to do anything and then like falling out of touch with people and then having the people around you really frustrated with you and deciding not to go back to work like all of this is happening in this story right now and it's so close to home that it's like oh, kind of bringing me down a little bit <sighs> but I am on page 182 there are 344, maybe even less than that. Wait, I think that might be an extra. Yeah, this, is, it's like 325 pages. So I'm getting close. I'm just over halfway. And I might take a break. I'm like torn between taking a break and just keeping going because I'm kind of worried if I take a break I'm going to not finish it or just like leave it until tomorrow and I don't really want to do that because I want to read No Exit tomorrow so I'll probably keep reading it's just rough man <laughs> it's rough <laughs> so yeah it's like 3 30 right now I've just been chilling on my couch reading it's pouring down rain again outside, very kind of gloomy, and it's getting dark-ish. So it's definitely setting the mood for this kind of story. So that's good. Anyway, I just wanted to update you. I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. I finished. I didn't see the ending come at all. I had no idea. What, I had no idea. All the people that I thought were possibly involved were not involved. And I know that's a spoiler because I've told you a lot already. So I will mark it as a spoiler, but I'm not going to say exactly what happened because it's so, so good. Definitely a five star. The intensity of her mental unraveling throughout the book was really, really, really hard. And while I was reading it, I could feel myself getting kind of like in a bad mood and feeling really off mentally. But by the end of the book, I was refreshed. <laughs> the ending is so satisfactory. Oh, such a good ending. Yeah, it's really good. 
another five well this is a five star the other one I think was a four this is definitely a five star the best one I've read so far by B.A. Paris I still have a couple more I want to read and I'm actually going to do a vlog at some point with female thriller authors because I think they're great and I want to read more of them so five out of five stars <laughs> finished my second book of Spring Flingoween and now I can't decide if I'm going to jump into my next book or maybe I'll watch like a scary movie or just something spooky or just something not spooky. I don't know. I have to figure out where my brain is at because there was a, a while there where it was not doing so hot. So maybe I'll do some self-care, make sure my brain is stable <laughs> and then move on to my next one. So yeah, uh, highly recommend this. Really, really good. Good morning, friends. It is now 8.30, and I wanted to give you an update on the rest of my night last night. I did not end up doing any more reading. I ended up starting the Netflix series You about the bookstore stalker, and it's really addicting. <laughs> I ended up staying up watching the show until around like midnight and then going to sleep. This morning, I am meeting my cousin for breakfast, and then we're going to get our nails done, so that's going to be very fun, and then the rest of the day, I am going to be going to work to help with the book fair set up, because we're doing a book fair next week, which is really exciting, and just continuing on with this spring flingoween. So, this morning, I did start No Exit, and I should have known that it was probably going to be a Christmas time one because it's a blizzard and it's set in the winter, but I didn't realize it was very, it was like around the Christmas holiday, so it would have been good to read that during December or to wait for December, but I'm just going to read it anyway. I don't mind. So the premise of this story is that a college student from Colorado is on her way home during the Christmas break because her mother was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And so she is having to go home for, you know, the emergency that is that. So she's trying to get home and she's in like the blizzard of the year trying to drive. Her car breaks down, her windshield wiper breaks off and like flies off the side of the road, which is unfortunate. And she gets stranded at this rest area. Thankfully, it is a rest area that has like indoor area with coffee and whatnot. So it's not like the standard rest area where you just have the bathroom and you sit in your car. But she's there and she's trying to find self-service so she can contact her family and she's walking around the parking lot and she sees in this van a child locked up in a cage and somebody has kidnapped a child. So she's trying to figure out who it is and it's very eerie so far. I've literally just started it. I've listened to it for like a half an hour now on my way in to see my cousin, but so far it's really good. I am enjoying it. The premise is interesting and I love a good uh, Snowden story. So yeah, that is my thoughts so far. I will, uh, continue to update you as I get further and I am going to go to breakfast because I am starving. <laughs> Hello. It is now quite a bit later. It's around 4.30 and I went and got my nails done. I love them so much. They're kind of like a purple with the um, gold on these two. But they're really pretty and I love them. And then I came home and I listened to a lot more of No Exit 
and so far it's good. I'm intrigued. I'm interested. I'm definitely not as captivated as I was by the first two, so um, depending on the ending, it will definitely be a factor in how I rate the book because it's not feeling like a five star for me. It's definitely feeling lower than a five star for me. I just haven't decided what the rating is yet and I probably won't know until the end because with thrillers it's kind of hard to tell. I still have about two hours of the audiobook left so I should be able to finish it tonight which is good because tomorrow is Monday and this is the end. The last day of my spring flingoween readathon weekend sadly. But I am on my way to go get some food. I just about fell asleep in there. Um, listening to my audiobook, so I'm trying to wake myself up a little bit, get some food, and uh, then go back to finishing up my story. It is now Monday afternoon, and I did not update you last night because depression reared its head. But I did finish No Exit. And I'm going to give it three stars. Solid three stars. It just didn't captivate me. I didn't really care, which is really, looks like, really sad to say. Because, like, obviously there's a child in danger. But, like, it didn't just make, it just didn't really make me care very much. Which was unfortunate. And I never really felt the suspense. I didn't really feel like on the edge of my seat wanting to know more. I did finish it fairly quickly. It went quickly, but I just never really got into it, if that makes sense. So three stars, <clears throat> not terrible, but I've definitely read better thriller novels than that. So unfortunately it ended on kind of a low note for spring flingween but overall I feel like I did really really well I had two five stars and one three star and I watched a ton of Netflix kind of horror kind of thriller you is honestly my weekend was very psychological like I had a lot of psychological stuff the Silent Patient was very psychological, The Breakdown was very psychological, and You is also very psychological. So I'm living for it. I love that kind of stuff, but it was pretty heavy. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to moving on from that, but I honestly had the best time. So thank you to Olivia and Gabby for hosting this for all of us. I'm excited for Summerween coming up in, in the summertime. And I am going to go ahead and sign off there. So if you liked my video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Comment, comment down below with what you read for Spring Flingoween. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.